Hey guys, it's Miss Skephart, and we're going to go through the mixtures notes. So please have out your um, worksheet and let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's define a mixture, and you can kind of see over here a picture of what a mixture looks like. Let me just get myself a little ah, not a highlighter, a crayon. Um, but a mixture is a combination of two or more, so we're looking at two or more pure substances that are not chemically combined. So we can see that there's definitely more than two things here because they're not the same thing. So I have I have this purple thing right here and I have this orange thing, I have this green thing, I have this red thing. They're different and they're they're not chemically combined, which means I just kind of throw them in a bucket together and boom, I can separate them out. I can get all my greens together, I can get all my purples together, I can get all my yellows together. So they're physically separated, they're not chemically. I could physically separate them, they're not chemically bound to each other. Okay, that's a mixture. Um, there are two main categories of mixture, and the first one we're going to talk about is called homogeneous or homogeneous. You've probably heard them either way. Um, but what it means is that the molecules are mixed in an even, even distribution. So we can see these three sodas, boom, boom, and boom. Um, they're different colors, but they're completely the same from top to bottom. Okay, in each respective bottle. Okay, so this Mountain Dew is, or whatever it happens to be is going to have that lemony flavor, limey flavor from the top all the way to the bottom. And it's going to have the same color and consistency. Same as the orange one, same as this Pepsi. It's going to be the same throughout. And that is a homogeneous or homogeneous mixture. Okay, and so what... Um, a homogeneous mixture like what we just talked about. Um, a solution is a type of homogeneous mixture, okay, and that's the next thing. So we just kind of saw solutions back in the previous slide, um, and we're going to talk about another type, which is right here. Um, but solutions are mixtures that are the same throughout, and two characteristics of them is that they can be physically separated, and that all parts or portions of that solution have the same property. So if I look at this Kool-Aid, I should expect when, I, when I've mixed it together that I have the same flavor of Kool-Aid from top to bottom, from left to right. It'll be the same color, consistency, flavor, everything. Okay. A solution is made up of two parts. We have the solute and then we have the solvent. Okay. The solute is the thing that is dissolved to make a solution. So in our example, the Kool-Aid packet itself is the solute. The solvent is the substance that we dissolve the solute, that the, that the solute gets dissolved in. And in our case, it would be water. Okay, so the sol this is the solute right here, and this guy over here is the solvent. Um, and this comes back to what we learned in the water unit. The most common solvent um, or the universal solvent is water. So water is going to be friendly with a lot of stuff. Water gets along well with sugars. It gets along well with um, salts. Uh, think about hot cocoa. You put some water in a mug. You put some hot chocolate mix in there. You heat it up. You stir it around, and bam, you've got hot cocoa. So water is a um, most common, essential to life. It's a universal. Um, most things on the planet are going to bond very well with water and therefore make it a very universal solvent. Um, so how a solution is formed? Well, first off, a solution is formed when we take the solute and we dissolve it into the solvent. The solute will dissolve down into all these itty bitty little particles. Um, so it's not going to be possible to identify the particle. Now, some of you might say, well, wait a minute, it changed color. Yes, it changed color. But that has nothing to do with being able to see the little pieces of Kool-Aid throughout. Okay, um, And so if you were to think of something... Um, like, let's say I took that same Kool-Aid packet, but I put it in far less amount of water than the package called for, I would see clumps of Kool-Aid. But if I mix the, the Kool-Aid packet the way it's supposed to be in the right amount of water, and I stir and stir and stir, I should have it completely dissolved where I can't see clumps of Kool-Aid throughout. It would be universally the same. Um, to determine which is the solvent and which is the solute, the solvent is always going to be the thing that's present in the greatest amount. So understand that there are other instances of solutions, not like this Kool-Aid and water mixture uh, or, or solution. There's other types. But if you're ever stuck on an EOG or whatever, if they give you an amount, the one that's the greatest is always the solvent. Okay, that's always the one that we would call solvent. Okay. So these are some examples of other solutions because, again, you, there's it's not just Kool-Aid mix and water. We have to think about you 
the little fishies, they breathe the gas in the ocean. Okay, so it's oxygen. It's a gas that's dissolved in the seawater. Air is oxygen dissolved in nitrogen. Bronze is going to be tin being dissolved into copper. Carbon dioxide is what we find in our sodas. So it's that carbon dioxide gas dissolved in a liquid. Vinegar is just made up of acetic acid being dissolved in water. So understand it's, these are all different kinds. If you saw it on an EOG, they would have to give you either a percentage or a gram amount or maybe a milliliter amount. They'll give you some kind of um, number to it. The largest one is the solvent. The less of it is the solute. Okay. So what changes the physical properties of a solvent when it is in solution? The solvent changes the physical properties completely of the solvent. So we have to think about if I just gave you a glass of water and I gave you, I told you to drink it, okay? And then I gave you a glass of water, but this time I had sugar dissolved in it. And you didn't know it was dissolved and as soon as you took a sip, you know, boom, there's something in that water. You might not see it, but you've changed the flavor of the water because the sugar has become one with the water and sort of dissolved together. So it changes its physical properties. We can take that sugar out. It is possible, but it does change the water's initial properties. Okay. All right. Concentration. And I'm not talking about like focus. Okay. I'm talking about when we change the amounts of either solute or solvent. Um, concentration, we're going to think more of the solute part of it, is the amount of solute that's dissolved at a particular temperature. And temperature is our clue. Okay. So if I, a solution with a higher concentration, so I have a higher concentration, it's going to be considered concentrated. It's more concentrated and it's going to contain more solute. Okay. So, um, let's say for example, I had, a, um, 500 milliliters of water and initially I put, um, 10 grams of salt in there. Well, let's say I still had 10 grams of salt, but I decided instead of 500 milliliters, I had 250 milliliters of water. Well, now that, that solution is more concentrated. It'd be the same with Kool-Aid. If I took Kool-Aid and I, I uh, didn't follow the package and I took, instead of having the amount of water it set, I cut it in half and you mix the Kool-Aid together, you'd take a sip and you would think, oh, it's very cherry tasting. That's the concentrated part. Dilute is the other term and that is that let's say I take the Kool-Aid okay and I instead of following the directions I take double the amount of water now it's dilute so you would taste it and you'd be like I'm tasting some cherry but I'm it's really watered down that's meant that's dilute so concentrated is like oh let's do two cherry dilute is I can taste it but I can barely taste it it's very watered down that's what it's meant by dilute all right so saturated when I saturate a solution, I am putting the maximum amount of solute that could be dissolved. So let's think about like sweet tea or something like that, or our Kool-Aid example. The, the solution, the, the solvent, the water, for example, is only going to be able to hold so much sugar. You can do this at home. So you can pour sugar and pour sugar and pour sugar, and you can stir it around and keep stirring it around. There's going to be an, a point at which that water, it doesn't matter how much you stir, it's not going to be able to hold any more sugar. That point it's at is considered saturated. So when it holds the maximum amount it can hold, it's considered saturated. Now, a super saturated solution, the difference in this is temperature. Okay, so if I put the water on a stove and I turn the stove on and I started adding sugar, I'm going to be able to add more sugar because the temperature is up. So I'm heating the water, which is allowing it to dissolve more sugar than normal. And this is how you would get super, super sweet tea, so like Bojangles or something like that. They're going to put their sugar in when it's warm, not when it's cold. So if they have the tea and they've let it do its tea thing and get tea all going and all that, when they add the sugar, they're going to add it hot. That's what gets it super sweet tea. If we waited until it got cold, it would not be able to hold as much sugar. Okay. All right, so sweet tea obviously being an example that we want to think about with super saturated. Um, solubility is a term that means um, measuring that amount that can be dissolved. So we can measure, it's the amount of um, a substance, so maybe the amount of sugar. So amount of sugar that can dissolve in a certain amount of water at a certain temperature. 
Okay, so it's how much sugar, maybe it's, we, we're trying to find out. So, but question mark to that. How much sugar can dissolve in water at a certain temperature? All right, and there's going to be some factors that are going to affect that. If I were to increase temperature, my temperature goes up, okay, it's going to allow me to increase the ability to dissolve a solid like sugar. But if I increase my temperature, I'm not going to really be able to do anything for a gas, okay? So think about um, the second part. If I'm in the ocean, okay, the fishies are down in the cold part, not in the hot part. If I have water that's nice and hot, fish don't like it because not enough gas can be dissolved in there, gas being oxygen for them, all right? Vice versa, if I decrease the temperature, I don't get as much sugar dissolved, but it would increase the amount of oxygen for the fishies, okay? If we're talking pressure on solubility, I can increase or I can de decrease the pressure and it's not gonna have any effect on the solid. So remember a solid, we wanna think of like sugar. So if I'm in a submarine and I'm up or down, it's not gonna affect that. It will, however, affect gases. So when I increase pressure, I'm going down in the ocean, I'm gonna be able to dissolve more gas. If I decrease the pressure, I'm gonna be able to dissolve less gas. So when we think of gas in terms of ocean, we think of o the oxygen. All right, the other category, so we talked about homogeneous first. The second type is called heterogeneous. And these are when the molecules don't mix up. They're not even distribution. I can see that there's a blue one here and that there's a brown one here and that there's a yellow one here. And the type of, an example of a type of heterogeneous mixture is something called a suspension, okay? And these are when we have these particles that are so much larger than they're found in solution. So I can actually see them, like this little snow globe. We can see all these little particles. And we can shake that snow globe all day long. I can still see all these particles, okay? And I can filter out the little pieces. Another example would be put flour take some flour and put it in water. And you're gonna be able to see all these flour molecules. That's because it's a suspension. If you have any questions, please let your teacher know. And I hope this helps with solutions and solvents. Go back over and make sure you know this vocabulary, okay?